Okay, so I just start by recalling you the Fatou Lemma, which is the last So we have uh, Fn, a sequence of measurable function, okay, non-negative measurable function. And we assume that Fn converts to F almost everywhere in E. And then last time we proved that the integral of the pointwise limit is less or equal than the limit as n goes to plus infinity of the integral over E of Fn, okay? Okay, now we will see some, uh, um, some example, for instance, concerning the fact that um, here less or equal is, is really needed. I mean, you cannot put just an equal. So let's see this example. So do you have in mind something, for instance? Can you provide an example of some function, easy one, of some function of a sequence of function fn which converts pointwise to some function f, but such that this inequality holds with the strict sign? It's always usually the same example, which. Uh, okay. One, I mean, there are many, of course, but one of these, yeah. Um, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, okay. For instance, if you take E equal to the all real line and Fn of X equal to the characteristic function of this uh, interval, okay, then of course we have that Fn of X, okay, Fn converts to F, uh, okay, converts to F, which is equal to zero almost everywhere. In, in R, and but this is equal to 1 for any n, and this is equal to 0. So, of course, you have that in this case the inequality holds with the strict sign, with the, with the strict uh, less. Or equal. Okay the, uh, okay, the limit, of course, is one, so it's, it's less than. Okay. Okay, then. Okay, the limit, of course, in this case, you can, you can write here the limit, no? because the limit exists. But it might be also some example um, on which the limit does not exist, the limit of, of uh, the integral of the Fn. Okay, in this case, it exists. I mean, you, you have the strict sign, but here you can replace the limit with the limit. So let's see another example. Consider E again is the whole real line, and you define Fn of x in this way. It's equal to 2 plus minus 1 n of key n, n plus 1 of x. Okay, so basically you have that Fn of x. <coughs> Is equal to is equal to three of key n n plus one. If n 
is uh, uh, even, okay, if, if n is even and it is equal to just key n, n plus n if n is odd, okay? So in that case, you, you immediately see that if you take if you take the integral here, okay, of course the values of the integral depends on, on which kind of integer are you considering, okay? So you have that, again, fn converts to f, to zero, converts to zero almost everywhere in R. Okay, but in this case, fn the integral no, of uh, does not converge, so does not converge. So you have uh, two different limits, okay? So you have, so the limits in this case of the fan is one, okay? So this is somehow an example for which you have the strict inequality and you really need to, to put here the limit, okay? Because the limit does not exist. Okay. Uh, okay, and then I will give you still another example, but uh, in, a, um, in, in a bounded domain, okay? May I raise this part? Here, here we take e to be equal to zero one. So the case now we consider the case where the measure of e is bounded. Okay, so just let me define um, the function, a sequence of function f k by their graph. I mean, it's it's very it's clear how you, you can if you want to to write the analytical. Um, uh, definition, but okay. So it's, for instance, it's equal to one here, or not equal to k actually, and equal to oh one over k, okay, and then they are zero. Assume that here is one. So the uh, the graph is looks like some this triangle, okay. So basically, the area is always one, okay? Okay, so also in this case, you have that uh, um, fk converts to zero almost everywhere in zero one. Okay, because however you fix uh, some point x, then you will find an integer that step out of x. Okay, so you are in, in the domain where fk is, if k, if k is sufficiently large, you are in the domain where fk um, has values zero. Okay. And so you have 0, 1, 0, um, so the integral of 0, 1 of fk is equal to, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the area here is 1 over 2, I'm sorry, <laughs> before I said 1, is 1 over 2, 1 over 2, but I mean, it's, it's constant. And, uh, okay, so in this case, also in this case, you have that the integral of zero is less, strictly less than the limit as k tends to plus infinity of zero one 
It's a, it's a, tri a triangle, OK? Yeah. So, you, so you have, this is, uh, the, I mean, uh, the, the area. Hmm? This is 1 by 2. 1 divided by k. You just apply the, the area. OK. And um, OK. OK. OK, now. Um, we will uh, somehow provide other, um, other result of convergence under the sign of integral and, uh, using the, the Fatou's lemma, okay? Um, may I erase this? Sorry? The, po the point was limit. I mean, this is a convergence actually everywhere. Eh? I, I wrote almost everywhere, but because it's enough. But it's uh, no, I didn't get your question. I mean, wh when k, you are not convinced that this this is the limit. Yeah, yeah. So be because basically the idea is is the following, no? Is that um, so you fix uh, when you are, we are talking about pointwise convergence? So you j fix one x, even if it's here. You know that if you take k sufficiently more uh, sufficiently large, this would look like something like this. Okay. If k is sufficiently large, then uh, um, the graph of f k would would look would looks like this. And so this x, the, the x that you fix, will fall in the part of uh, of the domain of the, of the f k where f k is zero. Okay. And then okay, and this is okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, now we state this other theorem, the monotone, monotone convergence theorem, which is also known under the name of Beppo Levi theorem. Okay. It's monotone convergence theorem or the um, Polevi theorem, which is an Italian mathematician. Okay, of course, mm, by the name, you understand that we need uh, to, to put uh, some, uh, some requirement on the monotonicity of our function, of our sequence Fn, okay? So we start by Fn be an increasing sequence. of um, measurable function, okay, of non-negative because so far we know how to compute this, non-negative measurable function okay, and uh, let F be the pointwise limit of the Fn, then then we have that really the integral of F 
can be computed as the limit of the integral of fn. Something uh, we gain more with respect to the Fatou lemma, because here we have the equality, okay, and we have the limit, but of course we also, we also uh, require more, okay, because we have this monotonicity requirement. Okay. Proof. Okay, uh, from one side uh, we use uh, uh, the Fatou lemma, so, we, so by the Fatou lemma we are under the hypothesis of the Fatou lemma. We have that this is less or equal than the limit of Fn, and then we need to to prove the other the other way around. Okay. Okay. We now, of course, we have to use our hypothesis, our monotonicity hypothesis. Okay. So let so we okay. Fn is an increasing sequence, so we have that. Uh, okay. Since Fn is Increasing sequence. Okay, then we have that Fn is less or equal. We have Fn is less than Fn plus one, and for what we prove, Fn will be, which is convergence to F. So we have this. Okay. It's an increasing sequence, so uh, the inequality is preserved uh, to the limit. Okay, so just take the lim soup, take the lim soup on the, on the left hand side, and so we have that the lim soup has n tends to plus infinity. Of n is larger or equal than e f. Okay, so if you combine these two, you obtain the, the, the thesis just by observing that, of course, the lim soup is larger or equal, is in general, is larger or equal than the lim inf. Okay. you get that okay hmm? ah yeah yes sure Okay, now we see some corollary of this, of the uh, monotone convergence theorem. Okay, so now we consider UN a sequence so again, let UN be uh, a sequence of measurable non negative function of non negative measurable function. And let we define F has um, so F has the series of U N. Then we have that the integral 
of f is equal to the sum of the integral of u n. Okay. Okay. So we want to use the monotone convergence theorem. So it's quite clear how we proceed. So you define Fn as the finite sum uh, okay and uh, apply and apply the monotone convergence theorem to a fan. And so basically you have that f is equal to the limit of a fan. Now you use the theorem. This is equal to the limit. You take the limit outside the sine of integral. And this is equal to the limit of, by definition, of n sorry, of i, which goes from 1 to n, of u, n. And these are finite, so you can limit Okay, so this is just an application of uh, of the theorem. Hmm. Uh, integral f equal u is not uh, uh, integral f equal no. This yes, one? Yes, yes. Uh, integral limit is uh, not. Limit, uh, um, ah, what is f you mean? Yes, equal. Ah, uh, f is uh, is uh, is uh, is this? Yes, the limit is. You write the same. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, you can, yeah, sure. Okay, you can, yeah. I mean, I mean, I just, yes, it, it's, it's the same, but it's just to to emphasize the fact that you can bring the limit outside. Yeah, if you want, you can uh, just Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, and then, okay, this is another somehow consequence. So let f be a non-negative function and we consider some disjoint set, disjoint sequence measurable set <coughs> and then we take the union of uh, such a sequence we define it as E and so then we have that Okay, so the proof, okay, this is a countable union, of course, this is, so you just, if you, put, if you let, define ui as f times the characteristic function of uh, one of the set in the union, okay, then you have that f q 
t of v is equal to the sum of this ui and from the previous proposition or corollary the previous corollary uh, we get the thesis <coughs> Okay, now we see another version of the Fatou's lemma uh, in which uh, we uh, somehow we require less in the hypothesis, but of course we also get less. So, It has Fatou's lemma in its second version. Okay. Okay, so we consider uh, so let Fn a sequence. measurable okay then this will let me also have unbounded somehow of measurable non negative function okay okay and that, that's it so I mean we don't require anything else. And what we can say? We can say that the integral of the limit of a fan, because now we are not even sure that the limit exists, okay? Because we, we do not require any, any extra hypothesis about uh, uh, pointwise convergence, okay? Is less or equal than the limit Of, of the integral of the fan. Okay, so this can be proved <coughs> has um, um, can be viewed as an application. Oh. Can I erase this? No. Okay. Okay. Can be viewed as an application again of the monotone convergence theorem. Okay. So we have that. Okay. I use the definition of Liminf. So. <coughs> Fn is equal to the supremum of the infimum of uh, Fk k no sorry k larger than n larger than n okay and then we we want to consider this function here okay define Define <coughs> Gn 
has uh, this theorem of Akai and this is an increasing uh, this is increasing sequence of function, okay? So the sequence because basically I'm doing infimum over less and less indexes, okay? The sequence Gn is an increasing sequence of uh, non-negative and bounded and the measurable function sequence of function okay so uh, basically we are under the hypothesis of uh, of the monotone convergence theorem, but okay, before doing this, we have that this is an increasing a monotone, a monotone sequence of functions, so it admits limit. So being Gn mono, monotone, it admits limit. And we denote with f uh, this limit, so a limit of Gn, which uh, coincide with the limit of f of fn. Okay, now we apply the monotone convergence theorem. to Gn, and so we have that the integral of, uh, of f over e is precisely equal to the limit of n tends to plus infinity of the integral of the Gn, okay? And now, <coughs> Serve some inequality and then we are done. Okay, so being GK is equal to minimum of FK for K larger than or equal to N, this is less or equal than FN. So we have that there, we have that, okay, Gn is less or equal than, okay, this is uh, Gn, it's less or equal than Fn. And from which we have that f is equal to the limit of Gn, which is less or equal than the limit of Fn. And so what we get. Give an example that 
this is more about the monotone convergence theorem. Um, okay. If you take, for instance, um, so we, we, we require that we, um, the fact that we want uh, increasing function. If we take the decreasing function, what happens? Is it is still valid or not? So this is, with an example, we will see that it's not valid. So. Uh, okay, so an example to say that the monotone convergence theorem need not to hold uh, for decreasing function, for decreasing sequence of function. Okay, so here we are within this domain, so the, the whole real line. And uh, okay, we define the candidate to, to provide a contour example are this function, the characteristic function of the AF real line, of the AF of. Um, uh, of this portion of the real lines. So, so we have that uh, uh, Fn is a decreasing sequence. Okay, is a decreasing sequence. Decreasing. Which converts pointwise to zero. Almost uh, everywhere, actually, I wrote almost everywhere because it's enough. But it's the convergence, of course, it's uh, it's everywhere in, in R. Okay, but of course, you, when you compute uh, the integral of, of the limit function and the integral of sine, you you have that here. This is this is infinite. Uh, this is plus infinity and the integral is zero, okay? So here is the same, uh, the convergence uh, goes to zero for the same reason as before, okay? You fix some x, if n is sufficiently large, then x fall into the, in the domain where, um, where f n uh, has value of zero, okay? Now we introduce uh, um, the concept of integrable function. <clears throat> okay, so we have that a non negative measurable function, of course, S. is called integrable uh, over E, for instance, <laughs> over, over the domain of the um, set E if its integral over E is finite. We need this result. Uh, 
Okay, we start by F and G to uh, non-negative measurable function. that if f is one of the two <coughs> is integrable over e and if the other one can be bound uh, from above by this uh, by this integrable one and uh, if g of x is less or, e less or equal than f of x uh, for any x in e, then, okay, it's um, almost everywhere. Me, e, then g is measurable as well, as well then g is uh, is, uh, is also no, not measure is also integrable and you can compute uh, and you have that e of f minus g is equal to the difference between the two the two okay Okay, so we have that. We just observed that we can split f as f minus g plus g, and we pass to the integral, to the integral, and then we have that the integral of f is equal, okay, to the, uh, okay, f minus g plus g, a plus g, and then you use the additivity. This is equal to the integral of f minus g plus the integral of g. But we know that uh, we use this fact. We have that f, the integral over e of f of x minus g of x, is bounded, is non negative. Also, g, the integral of g is positive, and we have two. And so, since we need to use our hypothesis, this one is finite. Then we have that by, by this relation, we can deduce these are both positive, and their sum give rise to something which is finite, so they must be separately finite, OK? Then we have that. Finite, so G is is integrable, and moreover, we are within finite quantities, so we can um, take this and move it on the on the other um, on the other side of the equality. Okay, so we have that F minus G and so we are done.
Now we will use all this fact to prove um, a theorem uh, that is called the absolute continuity of the integral. Okay, so it's somehow a version of continuity uh, for integrals. So you have that. We start by uh, f be um, a non-negative uh, measurable function which which is integrable. So we must know a priori that the integral is finite. And then what, we, what, what can we say? We have that, uh, as in, in the definition of continuity, we use epsilon and then delta. Then uh, given for any so epsilon positive, there exists the corresponding delta positive such that if you pick uh, a subset of V, a subset A of V, which is small measure, less than delta, such that uh, for every, for every um, set A contained in E with Okay, measurable set A with measure of A less than delta. Then you can say something about the smallness of the integral of this integrable function over A. This is less than epsilon. Okay. Okay, so uh, we start. Okay, we, we start, we, we divide it in two cases. Uh, first, uh, we consider uh, an easy case when f is bounded. Okay, so if uh, f is, is bounded, so we know that f is bounded, the integral, it is, uh, um, so we, we know, that there exists some m positive such that f, okay, we can get rid of this since it's non-negative. <laughs> this is true, okay, just to stress that it is bounded. And so we have that af is, of course, is less or equal than m times the measure of a, which is less or equal than m times delta, so if you pick, um, um, so epsilon would be m delta. So it, if you, if you uh, choose delta equal to epsilon divided by n, by m, so we are done. OK, then we consider the case in which uh, the general case, which in principle f uh, can be integrable, but uh, not necessarily bounded. And uh, so the idea is that uh, we want uh, to approximate a uh, uh, general function and a bounded function by bounded one, OK? So consider this sequence. This sequence of bounded function. Uh, OK. Uh, that are defined in a piecewise way. Um, so they are, uh, they coincide with f of x 
if f of x is in between 0 and n, or you, it's a kind of cutoff, you put them to be equal to n otherwise, so if f of x is larger or equal than n. Okay, or larger. Okay, then, okay, just um, maybe sometimes it's in some places it's useful to to observe that this one you can express this as the minimum between f and n. So this is also a way to see that, for instance, it is measurable, okay? Because it's me it's uh, it's a minimum between between measurable function. <laughs> Okay, if n converts to f pointwise almost everywhere in E, okay, um, okay, if you want it, you can see that if, uh, okay, if x is a point such that if, so you fix x because we are talking about pointwise convergence, if x is uh, such that f of x is uh, finite, <laughs> okay, then uh, you have that there exists some n, which depends on x, such that f of x is less than this n, and so you have that for any n larger than n bar, f n of x is coincide with f of x for any x. Or otherwise, if x is a point where uh, f is not bounded, uh, is uh, so such that f of x is equal to, to plus infinity, okay, then you have that fn of x is equal to x, uh, is equal, sorry, to, uh, to n, and then you have that, again, fn converts to f. Okay, and then uh, again we want to use the monotone convergence theorem. So, so we observe that it is an increasing sequence of function. Okay, so uh, moreover we have that fn is an increasing sequence of functions which okay which converts to f so by the monotone convergence theorem you have that the integral uh, of f over e is equal to the limit of the integral over e of fn. Okay, then use, uh, um, I mean, just rephrase th this fact by using the epsilon delta definition of limit. So you have that uh, for any epsilon positive, there exists some n, some index n, such that for any n larger than n, you have that the difference, uh, let me, of e minus e of n, this is always, um, this difference is always uh, po non positive because this is increasing, and which is equal, for instance, from, uh, is, is, less, is less than epsilon over 2, for instance, okay, for any, okay, now I already wrote, okay. And, okay. So, now uh, we choose our delta in the statement of the theorem to be equal to uh, epsilon div divided by 2 times n, and we consider a set uh, A 
and let a such that the measure of a is less than delta. So we want to estimate the integral over a of our function f. And so here we, we, we use, uh, we sum and we subtract the same, we use this, um, some, this, this trick. Okay. Okay, here you use the fact that these Fn are bounded, and here you use the fact that this difference is small. Uh, this, uh, well, for instance, uh, uh, okay, we can precisely take this index to be this uh, capital N, or in any case, any index N larger than this capital N. So this is less or equal than the integral, uh, okay, over all Fn plus this is N, uh, this is bounded by n times the measure of a, no? And so at the end, what you get is epsilon over 2 plus n, for our choice of delta, this is epsilon divided 2n. So, okay, of course, you, you end up with the, with the fact that this integral is less than epsilon. Can I erase this part? Okay, so no, now, so far, with all this theorem of, um, for instance, of, of, of convergence under the sign of integral, I mean, the strategy was uh, we know something about the pointwise, some pointwise information uh, about the, the function, and we deduce uh, some information about, uh, we transfer somehow this information to some, to some information about the, the integral of this function, okay? So from pointwise, we, we, we study the integral. So now the question is, can we do the reverse? So if we have some information about the integral of such a function, can we deduce some pointwise property on the functions itself? Okay, under some, uh, some good hypothesis, the answer is yes. And you can, you can this is a first uh, example of this, uh, of this correspondence between the two information. So you start by f, again be a non-negative measurable function. Okay. And then we have this uh, uh, equivalence. So we have that if f is equal to zero almost everywhere in, uh, in domain E, so if, if and only if, if and only if the integral of F is zero, okay? Okay, one side is, is, is completely trivial, no? Okay. Uh, if you want, you can you can formally say it uh, as uh, you consider um, in any h. Uh, you can take the definition with those h. So we will have that the integral this h of course is zero, and so you have you have that the supremum of this function h that uh, are involved in the definition of of the integral of non-negative function 
is, is zero, so you have that also the integral of f is zero. Okay, this is the trivial part. And so what about the other? So we start by knowing the fact that the integral, we know this. Okay, so we define this set An as the set where f is larger or equal than 1 over n. And so you, you, can, you can somehow reformulate this. We have that, that f is larger or equal than 1 over n characteristic function of a n. Okay, so this is you know, that zero is equal to f, not really equal to one over n, this integral, and then this is one over n times the measure of a n. And so you have that the measure of a n is zero for any n. Moreover, we have that you take the union, you have that the set where f is strictly positive can be viewed as the union, we already saw this, uh, uh, this decomposition, the union of a set like this, of this set f larger than 1 over n. And, okay, this is a union of a n. This is a countable union. And so we have that the measure of this, uh, of this set is uh, less or equal than the measure of uh, less or equal than the sum of the measure of this i n, which is zero. So we have that indeed f is zero almost everywhere in e. Okay, because I mean f is uh, larger or equal than zero. Okay, is not negative. If we prove that f the set where f is strictly positive as measure zero means that f is zero almost everywhere. And now, okay, now we see um, somehow um, a related result uh, which goes under the name of Chebyshev inequality. Probably you, you already know this. Okay, so again, f is from e, from set e, to r non-negative. Basically, we have the, the same hypothesis of before function, not negative, okay, measurable function. Okay, then uh, for, any, uh, for any t, for any number t, positive, we have the following inequality that you can estimate from below the measure of this set, this kind of uh, not level set, but this set, by 1 over t times the, int the integral of f over e, okay? Okay, the, the proof is, is quite is uh, quite fast. So how would you prove this? W 
we, we need first to, 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 to consider something like this, okay? So we have that F is larger or equal than T times Q F larger or equal than T, okay? We, we start by observing that this inequality holds and then as before we just have to pass here you have just to, to pass to the limit and you have that this is so equal than t times the measure of this set okay so we are done okay so that the measure of Okay, now always in the spirit to deduce some pointwise property from, uh, from some fact that uh, are stated as an integral property, uh, we prove this corollary, which is a corollary of the, the Chebyshev inequality, that tells you that if you have that f, okay, is again a function, um, Okay, no negative, okay, measurable. And you know that such that the integral of f over e is finite, so f is integrable, then you know that some this pointwise fact that f is finite almost everywhere in e. Okay, so to prove this, we want to estimate um, the measure of the set where f is equal to plus infinity and to, to prove that this, the measure of this set is, is zero. Okay. okay, so we consider this set. Okay, again, we can, we already saw that we can uh, express this, this set in this way. Uh, so you have, no, more than express, you can say that this set is contained in the set which is involved in the Chebyshev inequality. Oh, sorry, this is for any t. And then by monotonicity, Okay, we have that the measure of this set is uh, less or equal than the measure of this set here. <coughs> and now we use the Chebyshev inequality, okay, that tells you that this is less or equal than 1 over t, uh, the integral of f. Okay, this is true for any t. And so this is, we know that this is finite by hypothesis. So since this is true for any t, if you let t goes to plus infinity, uh, you get that indeed <coughs> the measure of f of this set is, uh, is zero, okay? And so, and so we are done. Okay. 
And now we are in position to define the general Lebesgue integral. <coughs> We start somehow with a new argument. Okay, so I recall you that, um, so we already saw that you remember what is the positive and the negative part of, of a function. You remember? Okay. Okay, so we'll skip this part. So from this you understand that how, it, how we can define the, pos the, the general Lebesgue integral. So we can split a function f, any, fu any function f, into the difference between the positive and the negative part, which are positive non-negative functions, so we know how to compute the integral, and the natural way will be to define the integral of f as uh, the integral of, of these two functions. Okay. Okay, uh, we say that a measurable mm, function f said to be integrable okay if okay integrable over e oh, okay if f plus and the positive and the negative part are both integrable over e in the sense that uh, we introduced uh, before, okay? And, uh, and we define the, the, Lebesgue integra the Lebesgue integral of a function f over e as this quantity f plus minus e f minus. Okay, now uh, we have to prove the usual uh, properties of, uh, of the integral because when you give a definition then we, we need to, to see that uh, um, the linearity holds and so on. So maybe we will start today and or no, maybe we will finish. Okay. So let we have f and g to function which are integrable over e okay then we have these uh, uh, four fact okay the function c times f is, is, is integrable and you can, um, you can take c outside the sign of integral and then you have the, uh, when you consider the sum f plus g is integrable and you have that the sum, the integral of the sum is equal to the sum of the integral. Okay, then there is the monotonicity. So if you have that f is less or equal than g almost everywhere, in E, then 
the inequality is preserved by the integral. And finally, the last one, or oh, consider two disjoint set A and B. Set in E. Okay, then you have that A union B of F is equal to the sum of the two. Okay. Consider the, the, the first one, okay, if C is zero, of course, there's nothing to prove. Or start with the case when C is positive, the, the case C negative is, is analogous. So you have that uh, CF is, uh, now here we use just the definition. We just give, this is E, C, F plus minus E, F minus. Okay, then we have that um, for this integral you can write that e, this is f plus. You can take c outside minus c e f minus. Okay, and this is equal to you collect c, so you get uh, what you want. Okay, the case. Okay, the case uh, C uh, C negative is uh, okay is analogous, and probably maybe you can do it by yourself. You would just have to uh, use this fact. This is ma the positive part of minus f is f minus, and in analogy, uh, the negative part of minus f is is f plus okay so really you have to use something you have to use this fact at some point okay Okay, uh, to prove the point two, we start uh, first by a general fact. We will prove a general fact and then we apply it uh, to our case. So if we have, uh, in general, if you have f, uh, which is the uh, f1 is given by f1 minus f2, with uh, f1, f2 non-negative, and integrable function, uh, okay. Then you have that f is equal to f plus minus f minus is equal to f1 minus f2. Okay, so by this we have that f plus plus f2 is equal to f minus minus uh, so plus f1. So they are both uh, both uh, side of uh, of this inequality are non-negative. Okay, and then we use a previous result about the additivity of non-negative function. Okay, so by previous result about, uh, the additivity of non-negative function uh, 
Okay, what can we say? We can say that F plus plus F2 Okay, is equal to F plus plus F2 which is equal to F minus plus F1 equal to F minus plus F1 Okay, now we observe that uh, everything is finite so all these quantities are, are finite because uh, we are talking about integrable function so we can write it everything so also all all the integrals are finite all the integrals involved in this equality so you have that f plus minus f minus is equal to f1 minus f2 so finally you get that the integral of f is equal to f1 minus f2 so you can use also this decomposition and so and call this star okay this is a general fact so how we use this for our purpose okay so we observe that uh, we have that f plus uh, plus g plus and f minus uh, plus g minus are integrable and positive and uh, satisfies uh, so all the good properties and so we have that f plus g is equal to f plus uh, plus uh, g plus minus f minus plus g minus okay so this is would play, play the role of f1 and this would play the role of the of f2 okay plays the role uh, of uh, f1 and this uh, plays the role of f2 okay so basically you have that f plus g is equal by star Oh, uh, okay, again by uh, f plus plus g plus minus f minus plus g minus. And so you can collect in the correct way, so you add that this is equal to, to this. Again, because everything is finite. Okay, just see three, monotonicity. Okay, we start by observing that f minus g, we start by, no, actually it was the reverse, okay. g minus f is larger or equal than zero. Okay, and then so what we have, okay this, is, okay, this is easy, so you have that just g minus f is uh, coincide with this positive part okay minus f plus which is uh, this uh, so by step uh, we can uh, we can use the, the linearity so we have that g is larger than f okay and the last one is uh, Okay, it's very easy. Four. Uh, so, okay, we have this disjoint set A and B. So you you B, F. You just use the the fact that F times key of A union B is equal to uh, the sum okay f key a plus f key b this is equal to okay so we are done
Okay, thank for today we can stop here.